Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Corel Painter 2019. Now, if you're a Corel Painter fan, you're gonna be sitting there going, why the hell are you talking about 2019? 2020 is out. Don't worry, there's a very good reason for that. And if you are a regular to this channel, you know why I'm talking about Corel Painter in general. Right now, there is a humble bundle going on. Um, I covered it in some detail in a previous video, so I'll do just a very quick gloss over. But as you can see, the big star of it here is Corel Painter 2019 and a number of different brush packs, including Manga Concept Design, superheroes, particle shop, and animation. On top of that, you can get a plugin that enables it to work in Photoshop and in PaintShop Pro, which you also get as part of this bundle. The key thing to notice here is $25 for Corel Painter 2019. So if 2020 is out, and yes it is, you will notice that Corel Painter 2020 costs $500 Canadian, so probably four to $425 US versus $25 USD. And you might be thinking to yourself, okay, but I want the newest and greatest version. Well, there is still reason to stick around because if you notice from the launch screen, there is something here that says upgrade. You click that and you will notice for $147 Canadian, so about 110 USD, you can upgrade your $25 version to the newest version. So you Americans out there, $135 versus 400. So either way, this is a huge bargain of a deal if you're interested in Corel Painter. Now, I actually mentioned earlier on, I am a big fan of Corel Painter um, from my previous uses. I don't use this all the time and I haven't used a current version in years. So I stumbled over it a little bit in this presentation, but I'm gonna just give you a quick hands-on of why I am so impressed with Corel Painter. So here we are, this is Corel Painter itself. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new document. We can come up here, we can do it via new, or we could use a template, you know, things like uh, eight by tens or A2 or so on kind of format paper. Here, we'll go ahead and create a new one. You see here, 920 by 1080p sure works for me you can set the background color you can set the paper stock that you want to work with and once you are happy in your ppi of course and once you're happy go ahead and click ok now to really sum up what we are dealing with here this is running on my surface pro 6 i decided to record it using the surface pro just because i think that's more illustrative of what a typical user would be like and i'm also running this on no battery power so we're just running this on my desktop just like if you're out and about and you are drawing or sketching using your tablet in your hand that is the kind of performance you can expect to see. So this is an i5 Surface with 8 gigs of RAM. And it gives you a good idea of the kind of performance you should expect from Corel Painter. And most of the time, it's very good. But sometimes when you're dealing with special effects or filters, it gets a little painful. Now, here's your default drawing area. Um, we've got a couple of options of how we can present things. So we can have a single view. And this works nice if you are on a constrained display. So if you need to have uh, you know, a single monitor or you're not running on a giant 4K display, this might be a good setup for you. However, you can come on down here to single document view and turn that off. In which case, you can have multiple projects on the go. So let's go ahead and create a second one. Sure, we're all good. So we got Untitled 1 and Untitled 2 going on. So you can have a multiple document view. This is something kind of becoming a, a legacy feature. Now everything is either moving towards tabs or single document. I actually kind of like having side-by-side -side views like this. But again, we can toggle back to where we were. Now another option we've got, especially if you're just drawing and you don't want all of this interface in the way, you can go here into presentation mode and you'll notice we are now full screen, uh, plus our menus are completely gone. So I'm gonna turn that off for this demonstration. But if you see, if you want a full-blown natural sketching kind of experience it's there for you so we're gonna go up here we're gonna switch our brushes and here's the real main star of the show this is where um, you will find the majority of the love for Corel Painter comes from see here we've got a ton of different brushes available to us we're gonna go to the, we're gonna start with the default so we're gonna come down here we'll go to pencils pens and pencils and you'll see you've got like calligraphy brushes um, pens various different pens lazy sketching leaky pens I was gonna go ahead with a pencil um, we're going to switch here down to a, a black color and there is a natural draw line. Uh, this is using the Surface Pen in this particular case. If you're using a Wacom tablet or a Surface Pen or anything like that, it works quite nicely. Now, do keep in mind, if you are using something other than a Wacom tablet, you actually have to configure for that. Go into Edit, Preferences, go to Tablet and switch to an RTS device as opposed to a WinTab device. So we'll switch that over, it works just great. You've also got the option of turning on and off multi-touch. We'll get to that in just a second. But as you saw, strokes are pretty good. It's actually, there's no lag going on at all. If I do a light stroke, you see, it's also got tilt support, as you can see. So if I do some thatching, so you can do your shading. You've got different pressure, darkness. It's very responsive. So if you're here for drawing, it is a very effective uh, option. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there's also multi-touch support. So if you're dealing with a touch monitor, I can do a pinch to zoom to go in. Performance stays solid. And I also can do a turn. So if I'm doing my, um, 
you know, close in detail work, I can zoom in and then there you go. Once again, good performance, zoomed in, a very nice media to work with. On top of that, if you're all about getting your straight lines, you can do a reasonably straight line freehand, not a lot of jittering going on. You can also hold down shift and get end-to-end uh, -end straight lines like so. Uh, we've also got some guidelines. We'll see that in a second. But there is kind of the basics of the drawing aspects of this guy. Now, we're, we're again, we're at the very basics. So as you can see, you have a lot of control over things like your brushes, your... Um, You've got layers down here on the right-hand side. You've got um, a ton of control over uh, your shapes, your brushes, and so on. We'll see a little bit more of that in just a second. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase some of the brush settings we've got here. Now, all those plugs that you've got, um, if you bought this package, so you see here you've got animation, and then you've got various different special effects brushes. You can see a preview of what they do at the bottom there. That is one of the things that was added. Concept art is another one. Now, some of these require a specific kind of layer to operate on. Um, just to be aware of that. So that is one of the ones that you get. So things like fire, atmosphere, flares, sparkle, turbulence. Um, then we got manga brushes over here. So you got, you know, um, distorto, liquify, inky sketch. So there is an inky, so we'll do an inky sketch. All right, here. So there you see, and then you'll see that it blends with itself when you run through it. So if you're going for that manga look, you can get uh, different brushes in there. So on top of that, uh, what's the other plugin we've got going on? Another one of these was, a, oh, Superhero. And Superhero, you see Damage, Darkness, Discharge, Fairy, Fireflight, things like, so you get Laser Beam. I don't know if Laser Beam works on a default channel. I always have trouble with some of these. Yeah, so I don't know the specifics of getting Laser Beam to work. Yeah, it's interacting with the background. So you see there, there is Laser Beam on another surface. So if you wanted to score a Laser Beam effect over something, that's what this, this effect would be for. On top of that, we've also got that particle brushes. Go away, O'Reilly. Um, so let's go here. We're going to do layers, and then we're going to do... Actually, I don't even think we need to do it in a specific layer. I think it will create one for us. So we're going to go over here. We're going to go to... Hopefully, I don't screw this up. Come on, drop down. Uh, particles. Like so. And here you can see a number of different uh, particle-based special effects. So let's say we wanted to add some fur. Uh, let's do like a red fur, and then we just paint, and then it paints in particles. Now my colors are swapped. Like so, so then that's what particle painting about. Now this is one of those areas where you can actually start getting into some pretty awful performance as a result. Now let's just go up here and create a new document. So, and we could do it here. So that, see, you've got various different options there, but we'll stick to the defaults again. Uh, what I'm going to do. So you see you got your layers controls over here in the bottom right. I'm going to come up here, go layer, and I'm going to do a new, no, I didn't want to do liquid ink. Let's do it again. Layer, new, thick paint layer. Like so, so now we're painting with thick length. Now you see I've got the, my, my, link, my ink layer underneath, but I'm going to showcase thick paint. We'll come up here, and we'll go down, drop down, and this is where it really shines, is in the paint effect. So we're going to go here, we're going to pick um, thick paint. There we go, thick paint here and let's go get the tube so we're going to just slop some paint tube right here and i'm going to come down here i'm going to switch over here to a mixer view instead so you got some pretty good control over your color pattern going on um i got a lot of fine tune control but here we go and we're just dropping ink on them so it's as if you were painting ink on a on a canvas so again your performance is very nice and there's the thing about this program if you're going for that natural the natural media look there's some pretty cool abilities in that regard so we come back here so now we've got our ink to work with we can grab a palette knife i think i missed i did miss palette knife like so and then we can just start smearing through it and you start creating your paint type effects now i have no competency with real world painting so don't expect me to have a lot of competency with digital painting either, but you got all kinds of tools here for oil style paintings. On top of that, um, we've got texture painting, or we could do um, pattern painting. So let's see, we come here and go to pattern pens, like so, and then we'll go pattern pen soft edge, for example. And now I'm gonna go back to our canvas, and now we need to open up a new window. You're gonna find there are a ton of windows hidden away here. Uh, but now I need to just find it. So that is under palette drawers, patterns. And here you can see we've got a selection of patterns over here. We can go over here to our pattern library, for example. And let's say we were drawing some, I think that's grass. I mean, we'll do whatever that pattern is right there. And you'll see you can actually paint with patterns. So this is actually really useful uh, if you're a texture artist and you're trying to do um, 
like a repeating pattern. And then you come down here, you got some of the things that you would expect. Uh, there we go, another one. There's another option very similar to this, but for painting with textures instead. Again, very useful if you are a texture artist. So if you're using this for texture mapping, you need to add the detail like uh, wallpaper or uh, like here, we go zipper, very classic. So you need to add a zipper in. And then the brush does a pretty good job of dealing with uh, other surfaces and other underlying surfaces. We can move our canvas over top of the ink. But anyway, so that is texture painting. And there was also uh, the other version of it. So we had, let me just bring up palette drawers. You have an idea. Um, so you got uh, particles, uh, you got um, textures in here as well. Uh, you've got photo art you could bring in. Oops, I missed. Oops, we missed. And it's kind of bringing and open up all these various different windows down this side. But you kind of get the gist of what's going on. On top of that, we've also got shape-based brushes. Uh, so we can draw with um, pens and, and so on over here. All right, this is getting a little confusing to read at this point. But you see you've got... And then we can close it. And the weird thing is, my stylus doesn't do the right click like it's supposed to. Uh, so you know, we just do a right click and then you can close that shape and then you've got a solid polygonal shape So you've got uh, that kind of stuff in here as well uh, We've got other cool tools down here like we can do a let me just bring this back over here. So new All right, let's create a new version. Let's go back here. We'll go into Simple all right uh, Digital airbrush sure that works for me. Let's go back to our colors. Hey, where did colors go? Did I close colors down? Oops Windows, palette drawer, colors. No, it should be here. All right, where did I put you? All right, let's get rid of the colored pen. Close that down. I'm, yeah, I'm over top of it. All right, so here we go. So let's go a little bit red, and we'll put symmetry on, for example. And then you can do, oops, I'm, I'm actually moving the symmetry line. Let's go back to paint. And now you see we've got symmetry around that axis. So if you're doing left and right style painting, you have that option there. Another very cool option is you have this perspective tool right here. When you turn that on, you'll see you've got options across the top here for controlling the, the angle of said grids. We can turn that on then. So if you're drawing to a 3D perspective, and then you can now follow those particular lines when you go back to paint mode with that enabled, and it will automatically follow the appropriate axis. I actually find it a little bit wonky to what I expect, but if you're trying to draw in perspective, so let's go down that line right there, and then this line right here, it kind of just snaps you to and keeps you in those particular perspectives. So if you're trying to create, um, you know, a three-dimensional object or concept art kind of thing, that is a very cool tool. On top of that, you can do a, a drop and hold. You'll also find you have grid options. And then you have this guy here, the divine proportions, if you are um, so inclined. And we can turn that on. Now, I should have turned the other grid off first because that gets a little confusing having them both going. But anyways, you've got these drawing aids in there as well. So the next thing we've also got in here is we've got dynamic plugins available. Uh, these are things like uh, you know glass distortion. We'll do a glass distortion in this case. Now, these can actually kick the crap out of your computer. But here you see, so uh, we can do a preview. We can do the amount that it's distorting. And you'll see the, the end result over there. And then once we like it, we can go ahead and apply it. So now we have the distortion effect in place. We've also got a number of special effects. So things like tonal control, so we can do color corrections, um, posterized negatives, brightness changes. Uh, we can apply lighting, for example, and various different other things like warps. So, um, we've got focusing tools, blurs, and so on. Um, yeah, so those are the, uh, and then the other, which is empty. Uh, so surface control, for example, if I want to add some lighting to a particular scene, uh, yeah, we'll make that a dynamic image and commit. And now you'll see we get real-time preview, so we can pick the point where our light source goes and how much effect it's going to have. We can pick the angle right here. Uh, and then you've got control over here as well. So we've got the brightness tool of the actual. So let's put the distance back because that's making everything look like crap. And so on. So you got effects over it. And then once you like it, go ahead and apply it in your scene. And there you go. And... That's kind of the basics anyways. You got decent text tools in here. You got one of the best magic wand selection tools I have ever seen in my life. It actually doesn't leave a lot of edged pixels in. And then you've got, again, a selection of special tools that go along with it. Now, what I'm not getting into is the detail level that we can go on these particular brushes. So for example, if we're back here in our layer and we were working with um, thick play, a, a thick paint layer once again, so let me do a control D so I've got nothing selected. All right, so let's go back here to our thick paint. All right, so, um, and drop some paint in our scene. Oh, we still got symmetry. Oh, and we still have the divine grid on. All right, just a sec, let me just turn that off. 
that's gonna get confusing. All right, go away. All right, so there we go. We got our paint to play around with. So now we could go ahead, let's pick a brush here of some kind. Uh, bristles, bristle, 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 bristle. There we go, grainy bristle. There, so we've got just kind of our paint settings going on. Well, you'll notice if we actually got this guy out here and then we bring out the layouts for our thick paint, you will see we have a ton of control over this actual, we can change the way that the, the clumpiness of our painting, we can change the, the, the palette knife settings if we were using a palette knife with the bleed amounts, the density and so on. So every brush has a huge amount of control over it. Now this could actually get a little bit con uh, annoying if you're not really uh, immediately aware of what you wanna do. The cool thing is we've actually got some predefined setups here. So if I come on over here, um, oh yeah, we also do this. So we hit tab at any time and get rid of the UI. So I got my selected brush going. So if you want even more, you turn uh, presentation mode on and then hit the tab key and you've got a pretty clean lined uh, painting interface. But we come up here and we can go ahead and go workspace. Oh no, layout, sorry. And you'll notice here we've got, we can also do a quick layout so we can snap between them, but you've got these defaults. So if you're working on manga, we can come in here, go to manga mode give it a second because it's basically reloading the user interface at this point, but you'll see all of the, the settings, like the configuration. So you're gonna switch between brushes a lot. So we've, we've pinned that out here. We've got colors and layers kind of amplified gradients that we're gonna use a lot. Blending and glazing are all set up for you now. Instead, if you're coming in here and you are working on um, concept art, go ahead, we'll click that out instead. And then you're gonna see a completely different set of UI windows configured for a common workflow. Um, I guess concept art and uh, manga aren't really all that different. So instead, let's say you came up here and you were working on uh, say fine art, so more of a painting kind of style, do that. And once again, it will reconfigure itself with all of the, the detailed settings available. Now this obviously you're going to probably want to have uh, a, a bare display because uh, th this is a little hard to see at this point in time. Uh, but it, it has all of the kind of the artist oils, the bristling controls, watercolor display, your paint configurations, and all of these things, again, have a huge number of actual um, drill down options available for them. So that is kind of it. That is uh, Corel Painter 2019 in a nutshell. I'm not even really scratching the surface of what I could do. We can actually do frame by frame movies with onion skinning in here. I didn't actually like any of the functionality, so that's why I didn't really showcase it. At the same time, we've got a right click support that gives you the ability to like quick jump between brushes you used recently or appropriate ones. You can also change the size of the brush you are working. Uh, there's a quick jump right here. Uh, so dragging over, we got this uh, drop down here for doing it as well, as you can just push your number in. Same thing here with your opacity for quick settings. Um, so there are a lot of things that you don't need to jump through all these menus to do very common things that are all available right up here at the top. But again, if you want, you can come in and you can go again, turn presentation mode on, hit the tab key, and you've got a nice streamlined interface. And once again, if you've got a touch device, uh, you can come in here so you can do your, your painting, your drawing. Oh, you know what? In tab mode, Multi-touch doesn't work. That's interesting and annoying. So anyways, you've got this ability to come in here and then notice how the paints are, inter the brush is interacting with the paint globs. That is the natural media aspect of Corel Draw that I, or sorry, Corel Painter that I've always been impressed with. Now, if you've got something like, again, uh, Procreate on your um, uh, iPad or something similar, that is uh, very similar. Ooh, we crashed too. So there are stability issues as well sometimes. But anyways, that is Corel Painter 2019. Uh, I, I'm just impressed with it, to be honest. Uh, and I hope that at least a few of you found it impressive. It is, again, a complete no-brainer for 25 bucks, in my opinion, if this is the kind of stuff you're doing. If you are on a Windows or Mac machine, you are doing a lot of sketching type work or natural media painting type stuff, it is a good choice. Um, it may not be the best sketching out there. There's a lot of, a lot of applications that do that kind of stuff, it's like Sketchbook which you can actually get for free right now. And of course you've got open source options like Krita. But when it comes to just raw media, replicating real world uh, art forms and the interaction between the brushes, as far as I can tell, nothing really beats Corel Painter on the Windows machine, especially for 25 bucks. So anyways, that's it. Hope you found that interesting and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.